from pole to pole and sea to sea. The words New York, skyscrapers, that symbolize the size and importance of the Western Hemisphere's greatest metropolis. Business and shopping streets reflect the prosperity of the city, as do the broad avenues lined with tall apartment houses and great hotels, some of them famous around the world. New York is a city of people, eight million people who live here and work here and who are friendly hosts to tens of thousands of visitors every day. Visitors who arrive at famed Grand Central Station or one of the other railroad terminals that serve the city. Visitors who come by air or sea or by automobile from every corner of America and the world. Visitors discover in New York a city of contrast, a city where the new and the old live gracefully side by side. A modern apartment house may reach for the sky while at its base stand quaint and picturesque homes of another century. This charming street is in New York's renowned Greenwich Village, long the favored residence of writers and artists. Artists who each spring display their wares out of doors in old Washington Square, with paintings hung on the sides of buildings, on walls, and on fences. They create an open-air gallery, fascinating in its glowing color and endless variety. Not far from Washington Square is the city's oldest church, St. Mark's in the Bowery, dating from a day when little old New York was hardly more than a good-sized village. Today, many great churches and cathedrals mark the tremendous growth of the city. On busy Fifth Avenue, famed St. Patrick's Cathedral stretches its tall spires high into the blue sky that arches over Manhattan. But even this huge place of worship looks like a tiny toy model when viewed from high up in the towering skyscrapers of Radio City. Often called a city within a city, these great Radio City buildings shelter spots of charm and beauty. The many features include a unique outdoor skating rink open from fall to spring. It's always fun for the skating enthusiast and for a big and appreciative gallery of visiting spectators. For a change in pace, try a drive through the park in the style of yesterday. Central Park has miles of scenic drives, wooded hills, and quiet lakes, right in the heart of the city. The Metropolitan Museum of Art is one of the best known of all the famous attractions that bring visitors to New York. The main public library has one of the largest and finest collections of research material in the world, a boon to the serious scholar. Almost as famous as the library itself, are the big stone lions that guard the entrance. Uptown, another well-loved statue, Alma Mater, graces the portals of Lowe Memorial Library of Columbia University. Columbia is the oldest and largest of the many universities and colleges in New York State, which include such familiar names as Cornell, Colgate, Syracuse, and Rochester. In view of Columbia's campus rises the beautiful Gothic tower of Riverside Church. And just across Riverside Drive is the tomb of one of our national heroes, Ulysses S. Grant, 18th President of the United States. Far downtown at the tip of Manhattan is the spectacular man-made canyon of Lower Broadway, where many a living hero has been honored by the city's tumultuous welcome in his hour of triumph. At night, New York's great white way of yesteryear is no longer white. Broadway and Times Square sparkle with ever-changing lights that flash in every color of the rainbow. The port of New York is our country's busiest, one of the great harbors of the world. 
650 miles of waterfront with hundreds of piers serve more than 200 different steamship lines. Cargo ships arriving from every part of the globe steam past the Statue of Liberty, bringing their cargoes of foodstuffs, raw materials, and foreign products to the piers along the Hudson, or up East River, beneath the graceful span of Brooklyn Bridge. Outward bound go the products of our great manufacturing centers, everything from adding machines to automobiles, from light bulbs to locomotives. And of course, New York is a port of call for the greatest passenger liners of the world. For the motorist, fine drives and parkways in all the boroughs of New York City lead to and from vehicular tunnels beneath the rivers. And great bridges span the Hudson to New Jersey, Harlem River to the Bronx and Westchester Parkways, and East River to Brooklyn and Queens. Some of these tunnels and bridges lead into the system of parkways and highways that bring Long Island within easy reach of the motorist. The island provides nearby outdoor sports and recreation for millions of residents and visitors in the metropolitan area. A replica of the Campanile of Venice, this tower marks the best known of Long Island's 12 state parks. Once an almost inaccessible sandbar, Jones Beach is known today as the world's finest seaside playground. Landscaped and carefully tended grounds, beautiful buildings, Miles of gleaming sand along the beach bring thousands of visitors daily during the pleasant months of the year. As many as a hundred thousand on a warm summer's day. Almost everyone enjoys a trip to the beach. And at this Long Island Riviera, there's room for all. And all are welcome. Surf fishing is popular especially along the rocky shores at the eastern end of the island. And there are sand dunes to explore. Just a mile or two from the highway, bleak but beautiful desolation makes it easy to imagine that one is marooned on a desert island far from civilization. Quaint Long Island villages date from colonial days. And most of these villages boast snug harbors, perfect for boats small and large. Speaking of boats, let's go to sea and try our luck in the waters offshore. Deep sea fishing is a favorite Long Island sport. Uh-oh, looks like she's hooked one. The mate stands by to help, while the skipper holds a steady course. Bring her alongside. Easy now. Keep that leader taut. Let's see what we've got here. And there it is, a fighting marlin. And a big one. Many visitors are surprised to learn that way down east, there are dude branches, just like way out west. Here's one on the tip of Long Island, complete with roundups, cowgirls, and all of the trappings and trimmings that go with the wide open spaces. There's riding, of course. And here's a special thrill for the eager equestrian. A brisk canter along sandy shores beside the blue waters of ocean or bay. Surely everyone admires the flowers that bloom in the spring. Tulips are one of the best loved of early blooms. And Long Island has a lot to say about our nation's supply of these delicate and richly hued beauties. The town of Babylon on the south shore of the island is the center of a great tulip growing and bulb producing area with a vast acreage of colorful blooms. Every year, scores of thousands of motorists drive along the highways and byways to enjoy the beauty of millions of blossoms at their springtime peak of perfection. Long Island Duckling is a familiar offering on the menus of restaurants throughout the country. Each of these fuzzy fellows, although he doesn't know it, 
is on the way to someone's dinner table. In just 12 weeks from the time they're hatched, these birds will be fat and fine and ready for, well, you know what. Now, here's one for the book. The duck population of Long Island is greater than the population of New York City and Philadelphia combined. So long, old fellow. See you for dinner. Important as it is, the metropolitan area of New York City is but the gateway to the thousand and one attractions of the Empire State. The only state in the Union to stretch from the Atlantic Ocean to the Great Lakes, New York from earliest colonial days was destined to greatness in commerce, in transportation, and in the pages of history. From the time of the first explorers, the mighty Hudson River played a vital part in the early westward expansion that helped to make New York the most populous and prosperous state in the nation. In the summer months, cruise ships carry city folk and out-of-state visitors along the broad river's winding course through the beautiful Hudson Valley, curving through verdant countryside, past farmlands and cities, the banks of the river are lined with points of beauty and historic importance. Not far from New York City, the river flows past one of our nation's great institutions, the United States Military Academy at West Point. Washington and Lafayette served here when the point was a military post during the Revolutionary War. Established as a military academy in 1802, West Point has honored the man who was instrumental in its founding, George Washington, Commander-in-Chief and first President of the United States. On parade days, proud parents, friends, and sweethearts come to watch the impressive ceremony. And here they come, America's finest, drilled and trained to perfection, present-day graduates of the school that has given us most of our great generals outstanding soldier statesman, and a president as well. As you drive the scenic highways that follow the banks of the Hudson, you'll often be tempted to stop and gaze at enchanting views. If you're surprised to see an ocean-going vessel so far from the sea, the answer is simple. Albany, the state capital, 125 miles upriver from New York City, is also a seaport to whose wharves come ocean commerce from many parts of the world. From the river, busy State Street leads to the capital itself and the government buildings which surround it. Early in the 1800s, a monumental waterway was constructed to connect Albany and the Hudson River with the Great Lakes. Along this continuous water highway, merchandise and raw materials could easily be exchanged between the eastern seaboard and the fast-growing areas of the west. Buffalo, on the shores of Lake Erie, began the rapid growth which has made it the state's second city of nearly a million inhabitants. Modern Buffalo has become the largest inland port in the United States in value of commerce handled and ranks first in the world in the milling and distribution of grain and grain products. Rochester and Syracuse, New York's third and fourth cities in size, have also grown into thriving modern centers of industry and trade. Today, all these great cities and scores of smaller ones are linked together by a superb network of highways that lead to every corner of the state. And what highways these are, among the finest in the world. Near the cities, and particularly New York City, major routes are beautifully landscaped. But in New York's countryside, the natural beauty of farm and forest, of hill and valley, needs little assistance to hold its own. These superbly engineered highways take the motorist past countless scenes of rural beauty. Endless panoramas of fields and trees and gently rolling hills. In the rich farmlands of the state, you'll often see herds of fine cattle grazing. 
for today the thriving dairy industry outranks all other agricultural pursuits in dollar value. As the highways wind further up into the state, the traveler finds an altogether different sort of scenery. Swift moving streams, clear lakes, and mountain peaks, a wonderland of scenic splendor. Whiteface Mountain Highway is a favorite for motorists who enjoy mountaintop views. Not far from Lake Placid, with far-reaching views of the Adirondacks at every turn, this winding highway carries the traveler in ease and comfort almost to the summit of one of New York's highest peaks. And, if you wish, you may take an elevator to the very top. On a clear day, you can see all the way to Lake Champlain and the St. Lawrence River. On the slopes of Whiteface Mountain is a unique and pictorial community. It's popularly known as Santa Claus Village, although its proper name is the North Pole. Here are actual workshops where elves and gnomes are hard at work making the toys and gifts that make giving a pleasure. Bo Peep is here with her sheep, but she also has deer and goats and other pets to delight the young folk. From spring until fall, Santa Claus Village plays host to scores of thousands of enthusiastic guests. And just in case you're wondering, of course, Santa lives here too. New York's highways lead to scores of historic shrines and monuments. Fort Ticonderoga on the shores of Lake Champlain is a favorite visiting spot for motorists. This reconstructed bastion looks much the same today as it did during the Revolution, when Ethan Allen and his daring Green Mountain Boys rode down from the hills of Vermont. In a daring night attack, they surprised and overcame the garrison, closing the route of invasion from the north. This was but one of many battles which has given Fort Ticonderoga a lasting place in our nation's history. Across the state where the Niagara River flows into Lake Ontario is Old Fort Niagara. The original fort was built by the French explorer La Salle in 1678. Now guides in the dress uniform of the colonial militia greet the visitor of today. Entrance to the fort is over an ancient drawbridge leading into a massive blockhouse through the blockhouse is the main area of the fort, where fly the emblems of the three powers who've held it, France, Britain, and the United States. The visitor is free to wander about at will. The soldiers who once manned these staunch redoubts are only a historic memory, and the cannons are silent, except when ceremonial salutes are exchanged with Fort Henry across the river a token of undying peace and friendship between the United States and Canada. A big noise from a little cannon, but it's hardly a whisper compared to the roar of Niagara. The great, the incomparable Niagara Falls. Awesome, majestic paragon of power. One of the natural wonders of the world. Niagara is actually two falls. This is American Falls, cascading 167 feet to the rocks below. Behind this mighty torrent is the Cave of the Winds, reached by an elevator and a series of catwalks. Guides lead the adventurous sightseer near the very heart of the waterfall's might. The steamer made of the mist is aptly named. This valiant vessel and her sister ship carry passengers through the eternal mists, almost to the foot of famous Horseshoe Falls. And these passengers experience a real thrill on the trip through flying spray and turbulent water. 
each year visitors to the falls average three million or more visitors who can never forget the all inspiring majesty of the mighty cataracts of niagara in new york there's water water everywhere winding rivers and dashing streams and blue lakes provide not only an aquatic playground for every kind of water sport, but a jeweled setting for every other sort of recreation as well. Do you like to take it easy in a charming mountain resort? Or is your idea of outdoor fun a bit more strenuous? For hikers, there are hundreds of miles of marked and protected trails. A stout pair of legs, a knapsack, some grub, and you're ready to go. And that's all you need, for throughout the system of trails are well-built shelters for the convenience and comfort of those who enjoy this vacation wonderland on foot. If you like to spend your vacation right on the water, the 100-mile chain of lakes makes it possible for the whole family to spend as much as 10 days or two weeks in a continuous trip on waterways of unsurpassed beauty. Canoes may be rented at several points, and there are shelters all along the various routes for overnight stops and for protection in case it rains. But the real thrill is when you're afloat. Endless miles of blue water winding through green forests. Sunshine and soft air, and a feeling of freedom, of leisure. An opportunity to enjoy, in still another way, the healthful pleasures of New York's great outdoors. But it's not only canoes. In New York, sailing has always been a popular pastime. The rivers, the lakes, the harbors, and coastal waterways are so numerous that no major center of population is far removed from good sailing water. In a fresh breeze, what other thrill compares to piloting a sailboat? Except, perhaps, powerless flight on the silent wings of a sailplane. Elmira, New York, is known as the glider capital of the world. Here you'll see sleek beauties like these in flight. But you don't have to be content to watch. Why not try it for yourself? A skillful pilot will take you aloft in a two-place ship. No, the gentleman is not impolite. To maintain balance, he takes his position first. Towed swiftly along the ground, you're pulled into the wind, and you're off. In a few moments, you're in the blue and on your own. Here's the smoothest, most effortless flight you'll ever experience. No engine, no noise, no vibration. Like an eagle in flight, the pilot maneuvers his glider using wind and air currents as his only power. And the conditions that prevail here make this area one of the finest gliding spots on the face of the Earth. The scenic and playground attractions of the Empire State include more than 70 state parks. Watkins Glen, though one of the smallest, has always been one of the most popular. The 700 steps and many bridges of the Gorge Trail follow the one and a half mile course of the mountain stream, which has carved the native stone of the glen into weird and beautiful formations. The path crosses and recrosses the narrow confines of the gorge, past and sometimes under the many falls. At Letchworth State Park in western New York is spectacular Genesee Gorge, known as the Grand Canyon of the East. 
Through the 17 miles of the gorge, the Genesee River dropped 700 feet on its northward course to Lake Ontario. Over countless centuries, the river has formed spectacular bluffs that rise hundreds of feet above the level of the stream. The towering heights of these sheer walls are crowned by magnificent forests. A series of foaming cataracts adds to the beauty and majesty of the park. And easy trails bring every beauty spot within a few minutes of your car. Still another wonderland of nature, this one near the shores of Lake Champlain, is famous Au Sable Chasm. A feature of the visit to Au Sable Chasm is a boat trip. And the high point is a swift dash down the steep rapids at the lower end of the chasm. The skillful boatmen are also accomplished lecturers. The weird formations of the chasm inspired many an Indian legend and romantic tale of love and adventure. Not far to the north is the stately St. Lawrence River, gateway to the Great Lakes, and a major artery for seagoing traffic bound the ports of the world. The boundary between the United States and Canada. And here, off New York's northern shore, lie the world-renowned Thousand Islands, an incomparable setting visited by hundreds of thousands of tourists every year. Cruise boats make regular tours throughout the islands, covering both the United States and the Canadian sides of the river. One of the many places of interest you can visit is fabulous Bolt Castle, a millionaire's dream which was never completed. Visitors to the vacation empire will find a new and refreshing glory in the ever-changing for the impelectable superb in quality and flavor. Among epicures, the wines of New York compare with the finest produced either at home or abroad. These sunny, sheltered hillsides, the soft, even summer temperatures, combined with just the right amount of rainfall, impressed the early settlers of European extraction. Over the years, their descendants have developed this part of New York State into a wine-producing area among the finest in the world. As the autumn days progress, colors deepen. The pastel shades of early fall give way to rich, deep tones that tell us winter is on the way. Soon, nature's changing robe of red and gold becomes a frosty cape of crystal white, a snowy mantle spreading over mountaintops and valleys luring the motorist to taste the joys of still another season in this year-round vacation empire. In popular vacation resorts throughout the mountains, every conceivable cold weather sport is found. For those who enjoy healthful exercise in the crisp, bracing air, skating is a pastime hard to beat, whether you're a novice or a seasoned expert. Near Lake Placid are championship bobsled runs, often the scene of national and international competition. Bobsledding is a sport for experts only. At speeds approaching 100 miles an hour, these disciples of daring provide many a thrill to the crowds who come to watch. Every year, more and more folks become devotees of the fast-growing sport of skiing. Modern ski toes do all the hard work, <laughs> once you catch on. They pull you up the steep mountainsides with no effort except to hang on. From the top of the world, you take off on a swift, thrilling flight. There are wide open spaces with plenty of room to spare or for the experts, 
there are steeper and narrower trails that call for the split-second timing that comes only from long practice and experience. In the Catskills, in the Alleghenies, in the Adirondacks, throughout the state, there's winter sport aplenty. And throughout the year, there's endless variety along the highways of the Empire State. From the colors of spring, to the colors of fall, from verdant farmlands to scenic mountain ranges, from the parks of Long Island to the shores of the Thousand Islands, from the roar of Manhattan to the roar of Niagara. New York invites you to happy motoring in this all-round, year-round vacation empire.